This is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex, and this is a ramble, and we come to you from New York City. Cities are nice. Well, they kind of named it twice. There she is, ladies and gentlemen, Lori Thompson. Hello, Lawrence. Hi there. <laughs> I'm Lawrence Taylor, actually. You know, I had one of those, uh, it wasn't a gender change, it was just an all-over makeover. All-over makeover. I used makeover. to be a tall black man yeah. with muscles, and now, now I'm just me. Really showbiz here, because you're doing something very special. You're talking to us while you're sick. Yes, I mean, it's and it's it's one of those, like, just generic blahs, the generic blah flu, yeah, where yeah. you just have no energy, and, you know, your whole, every system in your body that makes you who you are is kind of on a low ebb. <laughs> wow. It's in, yeah. Yeah, but I got up because I thought, I want to talk to that Bennett kid. Yeah, and I thank you for that. You know, it's, oh, the, the, it's the show must go on tradition, which I, yes. you know. <laughs> yes. Anyway. So my beard, so, my beard's growing back. I don't know. Did I cut it off the last time you saw it? Uh, you know, I... I can't remember. What do they call? Remember the soul patches? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I don't do there. a soul patch. I don't do a soul. Yeah. Patch. <laughs> I'm not a jazz musician. I don't do a soul patch. You're not a beatnik, you mean? And playing, I don't. I don't, I don't talk like this, you know. <laughs> From all that whiskey and milk they drink while they're playing the drums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so I, uh, you know, I, 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 uh, I was, it was. So you were sick. You're sick. You got was, something. You got the blahs. Yeah, it was. Well, it was. Yeah, it's just one of those where you feel guilty. You know, if you when all you want to do is kind of like stay in bed and sleep sporadically and feel better. That's all you want to do. Yeah. And you you can only take twenty five Tylenol a day, <laughs> but uh, actually you can only take six. But according to the directions. But yeah, it was just one of those generic blahs that are kind of hard to explain and kind of nobody has any sympathy for you because it doesn't seem like a big thing. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, yeah. You, I, you I, do. I, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, well, last week, I didn't do any shows last week. Uh-huh. Well, you had kind of a, a health thing. Uh, well, I had a tooth thing. Yeah, and, um, which are the worst. Uh, well, on Monday, it got really bad. It started getting bad, so Tuesday morning, we called the doctor, and she came, and as usual, she picked me up to take me to Scarsdale. Get out! That, that's, that is, that's full service. No kidding. I, I was going to be impressed if she even just stopped by your house and said, yeah, it looks good. She's, you know, done, but, she's done this before, too. She picks us up because she. what happened was they had an office here in Manhattan, and yeah. uh, they get, went through some kind of real problems about, you know, whatever you do to you know uh yeah. to get a new a new place they got thrown out of their old place on, oh. on a month's notice something like that because For a bit? They, they, yeah it was in the contract so they could do that but okay. they did it and they were out and they had no n new place so they then went around looking for a new place and they found one but it's like a condo Okay. And, and so they have yeah. to go through the condo committee and all this other stuff, and they're still not in there. Well, and when you're in that position, yeah. that, you know, you can't be a, too choosy. So, you have to go. Yeah. So a good majority of their patients, they had two offices, one in Scarsdale and one in, in the city. The reason they had the one in Scarsdale is they always had the one in Scarsdale. They huh. eventually moved to an office in the city, and she would work at like two days a week, and he would work at three or something like that. You know? Oh, so it's a married couple? Yes. That's yes. pretty cool. Yes. And uh, so she uh, she said, oh, you're having a problem. Come on up. We'll pick you up. I'll pick you up at uh, 1130. That's so great. I, I said, <laughs> you know, this is real This is real service for a dentist, you know. <laughs> right. For even a physician, a dentist, you know, uh, what, and anything, a dog cat. Yeah. But anyway, I went there, and they did a, uh, started a root canal on this 
Uh, on our front, right. front tooth here. So okay. you can look forward to the rest of it at some point? Yeah, I have to go for in for part two. Which oh, oh, the sequel. The yeah. sequel, yeah, yeah. I hear it's not as good as the first one. Yeah. <laughs> right, so I had to go in for part two. I have to go in for part two next uh, 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 Monday, okay? Yeah. Yeah, and then and they're, they're going to do, then I'm going to go back uh, a couple of days later for them to check it. But in e each case, she's picking me up. Rock on, Ben. That because a car service would cost you, you know. Well, and what she's doing is for certain people, especially when they have emergencies, not not uh, cleanings and things like that. Right, but, right, uh, right. Yeah. But emergencies, uh, she's going down and picking them up, you know, because yeah. they don't want to lose that business, you know. So yeah, and we've always talked about what was horrible, the, the Im impact that COVID had on the culture that wasn't good. But maybe there are some new business practices that spring, that will well, what, spring. What happened here? What happened here is they 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 want their office back. They want their their thing back because they're turning them all into apartments. Oh, you mean so they got to get out of there too? All the it's a business off. It's a business building that's going residential. Oh my gosh! Because so because they're like half full. Well, they'll have to find another place, a scramble and find another place, go through this all again, right? Yeah, yeah, well, absolutely, you know. Yeah. So they they went, we got, they got a new place, but it's just taking forever for them to be okayed, yeah. you know. So, uh, you know, and it's not like it's that easy to find a place to set up a dentistry, okay? Right. Because zoning alone is, uh, I've heard, a nightmare in New York. I don't York. think it's so much zoning as it is uh, dealing with, like, this condo board. Oh, yeah, because yeah, they have a proof. Yeah, they Once the condo, yeah. Wasn't there a condo board that uh, that wouldn't accept Madonna? I can't remember. She wasn't the star she is now. Uh, uh, well, you know, I, I, I would never own a condo. Does Marjorie own a condo? Does she own a, a co-op? No, she owns a condo. You know, and they've got a condo board, but she was there before they went into individual condos, owning oh, that's condos. Cool. She so, can have some grandfathered so she, rights. She was yeah. grandfathered in there, yeah. yeah. That, that is good. Well, the other thing, too, is uh, the homeowner or the association fees. Mm -hmm. To me, why am I going to buy a place that I'm going to have to pay on for the rest of my life? The whole idea of buying a place is that you can someday pay it off and you will be. And then you own it, yeah. If you own it, it's yeah. yours. You well, and, pay and, the tax. and nobody else has to make decisions. But my shirt is wrinkly today. Yeah. There's this cool stuff you can get while we're. This is our domestic segment. Um, oh, it's now, a, now it's now even now, now we take time <laughs> off from our regular programming for household <laughs> hints from Lori. Yes, Lori. That's right. I've got a few. One is the best thing to get out stains is OxyClean mixed in the bottle cap of the detergent with baking soda. Put it on. Don't leave it on too, on too long before you wash the item, though, or then it will make a new stain. But you put that on just about anything mm -hmm. and wash it, and it will come out. I just, I just use shout. Shout. See, I don't do shout. I, I've tried shout. I've tried all of them over the years because I'm constantly spilling things, and I'm kind of a religious about getting the stains out. Yeah. And so I read all the books, the Martha Stewart Religious book. Religious about getting the stains out. You say prayers, things like that, incantations. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, I stain, go come out. Stain, <laughs> come out. <laughs> Look out for my favorite shirt. Yeah. Um, but they, there are um, guidelines that you can do. So I kind of read them on the web, on the interweb. And uh, they do work. But the best one I found is my own concoction, which is Oxy and a little bit of baking soda. And then you mix it up with a toothbrush. Mm -hmm. And then you, you go in into your mix with the toothbrush and you lightly rub it on the scent, on the stain. But just the stain. Don't get it outside the stain or you'll create a new stain that's bigger. So just with the toothbrush, lightly brush that stain until it dries. Wait about 10 minutes, no more. And then throw it in with your regular clothes and it will work. Really? That yeah. was household hints with Lori. Right? That's right. Who needs who needs Halloween's? <laughs> you know, um, yeah. Back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> yes. Uh, so anyway, is... so this dentist, 
um, um, you know, uh, has most a lot, you know, all the all the New York business were New Yorkers, so she they they she goes down and picks you up, you know. That's uh, so cool. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking. Well, the service industry we knew was going to explode. It already did in COVID. Food delivery. Now people that would never get food delivery are getting food delivery. Oh, I, that's all we do. DoorDash. Yeah. Do, well, we DoorDash. do we do uh, in, Instacart and then. A lot of these places have their own individual deliveries things, you know. Yeah. I'm going to open a food delivery service, and it's called Shit, You're Too Lazy to Go Out and Get Yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be hard to fit it on a business Well, card. you know, it was we just got used to it during COVID. That's you know. exactly it. It became more of kind of edge toward being a necessity or a practicality. It became practical. Because well, I'm having cer I'm certain walking problems and things like that. So, you know, I, uh, yeah, I went to my, yeah. I went to my neurologist yesterday and he said, yeah, one side is weaker than the other and so on and so forth. And Did they give you something for yeah. it? Oh, no. No, he just gives me this pill that makes me forget stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. Like all the mistakes I've well, ever made? Well, it solved, it solves, it solves the problem with the, you know, you've got, and the reason you're taking the pill because you forget why you're taking the pill. <laughs> so it, you have it a completely stub toe yeah. like a heart attack. This <laughs> this getting old really sucks. You know what? I didn't know how how much I would be unprepared for it because I've always I've prayed since I was like in fourth grade. Help me age gracefully because I always had a lot of empathy for elder people. Do you I really saw do you really people. pray that? You do. You, you do that prayer. Yeah, I've done it for a long time. See, I do a prayer. I, admit, I I'm happy to admit this. I, I I say a prayer every night before I go to bed. That's great. I've it's... been saying it ever since I was a child. <laughs> really? Do I ask? Really? For a while, I didn't do it any longer. I think, yeah, well, I'm too old to do that. And then I decided, nah, it's pretty pretty good. So what it what it is basically, I never pray for myself. Which is kind. I pray for other people. That's excellent. You it know, builds a bond I, with the those pe other people. People are included in the prayer of people who have died. Uh -huh. You know, I just added Christy to it. Yeah, you know. I call them my team. Your team? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the people I'm getting ready to visit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ready to reservations. Yeah. You know, I like pizza. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, if I die and there is a, a heaven, I, you don't. do you believe in heaven? No, not like most people. Not okay. conventionally like most people do. I don't think there's pearly gates. I think it's an infinite amount of time to forgive yourself and forgive everyone else and think about what is yeah. what was lovely in your life. But I and don't I don't say prayers necessarily for myself. I, I say them for other people. I, that's I, great. I, you know, I'm I'm not a selfish prayer. You know. <laughs> yeah. Or people that pray for stuff. Well, I figure I, if you're going to say a prayer and a prayer is going to get answered, don't waste it on yourself. Right. Yeah. You know. <laughs> you're in control. You can manifest that yourself. But, but so many people are dying, the prayer is getting awfully long, and I've got to somehow edit it or something. I don't know. I have to make a list and update it constantly. I, I, um, because I, I used to have them alphabetically memorized, but no more. Yeah, no, but uh, you know, I mean, last last year I had to add Shecky. I know who Did, you guys were close. Yeah, for a and long then I had time. to add Christy. You know. I know that was a heartbreaker for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, they're all heartbreakers, you know, because they're <laughs> people you knew who died. Like like the Jim Carroll song. These are yeah. people who died, died. They were my friends. Yeah, and they died. You know. Um, it's uh, it's really kind of sad, you know, that, that, that it has to happen. But the reason it happens is I'm living too long, and so of course people are going <laughs> to die before me. I'm That's already, right. I'm already way. I've I've already gone past my expiration date. You know. Right. You're um, dragging your feet, it, Bennett. <laughs> I'm dra dragging my feet, and um, uh, you know. So I'm. I just feel I like Marjorie says we're in our last chapter, and I said. No, we're in our final index. <laughs> You're in the epilogue. We've already, we've already written the book. 
you know. That's right. I do love that song, that Elvis Costello, Every Day I Write the Book. And I try to keep that in mind every day. Like, you know, in two years, am I going to remember what I did, you know, July 24th? Or what day is today? I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but I will know it today. And so if I can stay in the present and attend to things today and carve that legacy that I would like to leave, then the chances of it extending yeah. and being the reality, of course. Right, right. Yeah. So anyway, so, you know, uh, so I say a little prayer. I, I know people are going to find that amazing about me, but, you know, we all have our little secrets, you know. You have a spiritual side. It's just, you know, you don't talk about it at I, I don't have a spirit. What can I call it? Is it a spiritual side? Not a religious side. side. I mean, I, I consider that what I'm doing is remembering all the people that I loved, you know. Yeah, paying homage, yeah. you know. And there are uh, a, couple of, a couple of people that are in there who are still alive, but they're not well. And so yeah. I keep them in those prayer, in that prayer, hoping that, you know, it'll help them, you know. I think that's a wonderful way, if nothing else, to pay respect to this life and the friendship that brought you all together. Yeah. I mean... That's, if we can do that every day, that's a pretty good life. Yeah, well, I also I also pray for the death of Donald Trump. So there are parts of my prayer that aren't, <laughs> you know. I know. Were you blown away? And they came down. My husband walked in and he said, Joe Biden just dropped out of the race. And I was like, it blew me away almost as much as 9-11, not for its tragedy, but for its unpredictability. I mean, there was, I have never seen like that, something like it in my lifetime. And this seems almost like a cartoon, this, rea this reality we're into well, right now. Yeah, it, 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 it gets more and more amazing. I mean, I, it, he should have never decided to run anyway, okay? He must have been pressured, yeah. No, I mean, I'll tell you what happens. I think you become president and you go, I get the big plane? <laughs> you know, oh, wait a minute, get I, I get the chef on call 24 hours a day? Yeah. Uh, how about some lobster? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and by the way, it. send it over to the plane because I'm just going to go flying. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, the perch, man, that's what would be the hardest thing about being well, president. I think, I think you, yeah, I think you get to that point. Like he said that he wasn't going to run for a second term. He said that when he was running before. He said, I want to be an interim president that's a caretaker, and, and then after the, a, a term, I'm going to give it up and give it to somebody else. And everybody thought, what a nice idea, you know. Well, it came to renewal time, and he realized he said something he shouldn't have said. Well, and, yeah, exactly. And the, these committee, like the Republican National Committee and the Democratic National Committee, they get... They're full of people with their own ambitions, and that's how the decisions are getting made. And so that's what amazes me is the power of these committees in our individual choices. Right. It's just, I, I think that's a, that is definitely a so, negative. So as a woman, how do you feel about Kamala Harris? I'd love to say I like her, but I just, she, she's blonde. She's very pretty, but... Um, and I think Mommy, certain... Did you say she's black? No. Oh, I... I said she's blah. Oh, blah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said... Blah, you can't, you can't tell from a photograph, blah. Black yeah. is a little more easily seen. Right. But she just... Uh, well, first of all, I'm a little tainted because I we were in San Francisco when she was coming up. And she... And I know women are always going to face this charge. But she hung around with, I won't say who they are, but a lot of political people, people with clout when she was coming up. And there are a lot and a lot of rumors that she was a bit of an opportunist. We're all opportunists. But uh, that she was a little untoward in the uh, ruses really? she used. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if it's true. But right. it stayed in my mind enough because I used to do. Uh, um, excuse me, I'm trying to I'm trying to adjust something here. Yeah, there we okay. go. Okay. Okay. Much better. Well, anyway. I used to MC some things for Jackie Spear. You know, who's a politician yeah, from yeah. California, who I adore. Who's so cool. I wish she. Now, if she were running for president, I would vote for Jackie Spear in a heartbeat. Yeah, but you, but you, well, we all kind of knew about Kamala Harris. 
Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. she was always bubbling on one the of one, of, one of the rumors, rumors at the time was that she was having an affair with Willie Brown. That's what I was going to say, but I yeah. didn't know if that was safe. Yeah. No, what, what, the Republicans are mentioning it. Yeah. You know. And yeah. it wasn't that... And, it wasn't that she was, you know, I, I I guess what bothered me about that is I just never liked Willie Brown. I figured it was bad taste. Ah, you know. Well, I kind of liked Willie Brown. In fact, I was sitting at a table at the Fairmont that yeah. I was in seeing, in seeing this event for Jet Key. Yeah. And uh, they were sitting, Willie Brown and Kamala Harris, who nobody really knew too much about, were sitting at the table. So I was able to observe their dynamic. And you can tell a lot about how people interact. Even if you didn't hear what they were saying, yeah. you can tell if there's an intimacy there. And I thought, I wonder about that. Because Willie Brown, I, he may be a loyal husband in all the right ways, like he and his wife have an agreement. He was rumored to be a womanizer. Yeah. 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 Well, it was rumored. It was rumored that there was a, an affair there. I, I also think there was a possibility of Gavin Newsom. I, you know, why they didn't go with Gammon, and then balance Newsom, out. N Newsom is a, is a horn dog, and uh, I can't imagine that with her as the district attorney, he didn't at least try something. I would think, but he was, you know, I was in that, uh, by age group and peripherally on, on the social edge of circles in which he interacted. So we weren't friends. So we weren't even acquaintances. I doubt he would call me my name if I saw him on the street. Yeah. But um, he, yeah, he, he always had it close to the vest. He played things pretty close to yeah. the vest. Yeah, I, definitely. Because I, I was, he was groomed for politics. You know, his dad, and and so I, I never heard really much bad about. Him. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I would, I, I don't know what. But any, anyway, so back to the question: How do you feel about her now? I, I, I don't have any feelings about her. I don't think she has enough of a record that's positive. I don't know of anything she did when she was vice president that really made a mark. I think that she is, that the society is ready for a black woman to be president. And so that may go in her favor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I, I happen to I happen to like her. I think she's she's comporting she's comporting herself well. She is in a yeah. tough situation. I will give her that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she yeah, has handled this pretty much textbook. You know. Yeah. Yeah. She hasn't made too much noise about it. She's handled it gracefully. I mean, yeah. isn't that what we can do? Is handle well, life now, graciously? Here comes here comes the big question. See, I mean, this is not what it's all about. Whether she's a nice person or whether she, you know, who she had sex with, none of that matters. Okay. But can she govern? But can, uh, number, well, I'm not worried about whether she can govern or not. I think that being president is not a job that you are uh, an apprentice for. Uh, maybe as <laughs> vice president she was, uh, mm -hmm. or she saw how it was done. But very seldom do presidents act in a smart way and take their vice president and push them to the front so that everybody gets used to them being there and seeing them doing stuff and uh -huh. so on. All, all, they're, all, they're, all they're thinking about is getting reelected, okay? Yeah. And this person's just in the pocket. Um, mm -hmm. So really what happens while their vice president, while she was vice president, he really didn't push her out to the front much. You know? No. I don't recall any events that she had any time that were within 400 miles of me. But now that she's giving speeches and so on and so forth, she's pretty good. You know, she's really... Yeah, she she's, has poise. Yeah, she has and poise. I think when it comes to a debate with Donald Trump, she's going to make mincemeat out of him. I think she'll hold her own, yeah, yeah. You know. which is good. At this point, like I say, I just don't... I'm not impressed so far. It doesn't mean I won't be her biggest fan in a I'm, month. I'm more impressed than I was a few days ago. But now she's more visible, and I can see her, and I can judge her, you know. And I, I'm, I'm really, I feel far better about her being the person running. You yeah. Know. Then I, I just thought she and Gavin Newsom together, and maybe run her as president, him as vice president. But, but you I know, they, uh, he, he, she couldn't run Gavin Newsom as vice president, because according to the Constitution, you cannot have a two people from the same state being president and vice president. 
Whoa, that's probably a good idea. I mean, a good statute in the Constitution. Well, yeah, then you just, you know, you do like a, a, a divorce in Nevada. You go there and take residency, and it only takes six weeks, you know. That's what RFK did, yeah, Junior. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, uh, that, yeah, I, I don't know. You know, maybe I should take that back. I don't know enough about her to really even say she's yeah. gone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll back I, I, I'm getting. I'm kind of getting to really like. Her. Well, hey, listen, we've run out of time. Out of time. You just you just well, talk too much. That's all. <laughs> you know, that's a problem. <laughs> Thank goodness I'm not a pipe fitter. No one could hear me over that loud noise. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's uh, that's our good friend Lori Thompson, who will be with us again next week, right, Lori? Absolutely. Say goodbye to everybody, Lori. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, there was Lori, and uh, we're back again here. Let me just turn up my microphone so I can hear myself better. Okay, there we go. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I, keep, I keep trying to learn how to adjust this microphone. And slowly but surely, I'm getting to learn how to do it, so... Anyway, hello everybody. How are you? We were off for a week last week uh, because of uh, tooth problems and uh, the fact that I just am not as resilient as I used to be, you know. And so uh, it took a while for us to get back into shape, but we're doing it now. Now, I don't have any appointments this week, but I have an appointment Monday with the dentist. So if I don't survive next week, we'll probably have to call the show off again. But, you know, we'll wait and see. Uh, but uh, that's, uh, you know, that's it. We have a lot of things to talk about. There's been a lot of news. In the, and actually, it had, didn't happen last week. It happened in the last couple of days. But let me uh, admit some people here. Uh, Charlie Wallace is available, as is uh, Josh Wheeler, who I'm sure has some opinion about the last week. Let me just uh, bring them in. Let me, wait a minute, I just pushed uh, admit all. There we go. Okay, now we're fine. And here they come, ladies and gentlemen. Charlie Wallace is there. And uh, Josh Wheeler is there. Hello, Josh. How are you? Good. Good. L lots happened in the last couple of days, huh? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, really. It's uh, it's quite a quite a, a thing that's been happening here. Um, to begin with, Biden said, "I I give up. I'm not going to do this. I don't want to put up with it anymore." And, uh, and then he in, in, uh, said he felt that uh, the nominee should be uh, um, our vice president, Kamala Harris, and. Uh, we're off to the races now, you know. What's that? But a lot of enthusiasm for her. Yeah, but then I think I think my my theory is that given how bad things were, uh, people would have enthusiasm for a jar of gel. <laughs> you know, um, that that you know if we were looking for some kind of person to be enthusiastic about, and she's you know she's done an okay job of of doing that. So. How do you feel, Josh? How do you feel about you've gotten to hear her in the last couple of days? Well, uh, I think that we kind of we talked Saturday and we spoke this into existence. So just proves that we have enormous and tremendous power. We'll have to decide how we want to wield that in the future. But I mean, it. you know, I think for Biden, you know, it was probably the right thing uh, well not probably it was the right thing to do um you know he spoke tonight and you know what he said is well received and it's very good but you know you can tell that he's a little frail anymore you know so i think the decision was correct um i personally maybe you know would have a preference for someone else as you knew but that's was not anything against the vice president that was just personal uh choice on my part but having you know gone through it people have supported her i have no problem supporting her i didn't have any you know particular problem 
uh, with the vice president either. Um, and I must say that I, I've been very pleased, uh, honestly surprised probably too, you know, that the enthusiasm has been very good and the money raising has been uh, very good, uh, outstanding. And look, it was a, a good moment to unify the party. I, I can't find a lot of fault in it. I mean, even if you don't, even if you said, well, you know, I don't, I would have liked to have seen so-and-so, that's fair enough, because, you know, you have your right to want someone else, but I, I can't find any criticism so far of what what's what's happened. You know, I thought that she handled it, you know, well. She didn't act like she was entitled or anything like that. And Joe Biden, is, as the president, he's certainly entitled, he is, to pick whoever he would like to see. He's allowed to say that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, so, you know... A lot of support behind it. I mean, that's. I think there. Yeah, there was nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of support, you know. I mean, a, a lot of the polls and, and things showed that she was, you know, basically, you know, in a basic tie with Trump. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was before she even was running. So you know, if you can be tied with Trump and you're not even running, right. You would think that you would get some sort of boost as you started to campaign and if yeah. people were open-minded and they have their convention, Republicans have already had theirs, etc. So I think it was fairly well-timed and, and, you know, thought out. It wasn't a clown show or anything like that or, right. or whatever, you know, and I think that a couple of prominent people uh, who might have been preferred by other Democrats came out, you know, all within really, I, you know, 12 to 24 hours and said, no, well, I'm not, I'm not running. I'm supporting this. And they put a quick end to it. You know. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's been very good. Yeah. Um, uh, Gretchen, which, Whit, 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 Whitmer. Gretchen yeah. Whitmer, uh, uh, was one of the ones that was being named and the news constantly brings her name up. And she has said already, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. You know, I would turn it down. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So, so you know, I mean, it's been pretty well done. I mean, I think that for all that they'll say publicly, I, I think that Trump people uh, are probably crying behind the scenes. And, and you can already see some of the wine ass in them coming out, you know. You know, oh, you're covering her so much, it's not fair. And, you know, I mean, this coming from a person that the news has literally stuck a camera up his ass for the yeah. better part of a, over a decade, uh, acting like he doesn't get enough coverage on the news, for goodness sakes. Uh, shut up, you know? Yeah. Like, what yeah. a whiner he is. <laughs> well, so hey. I'm saying we ought to, they, the, the Republicans deserve to be reimbursed for all the money they spent researching Joe Biden. Oh, yeah, yeah, I heard that him. one. Yeah, and the other one poor was, little baby. The other one was <laughs> is that uh, Trump wanted equal time for Biden's speech tonight. Well, mm -hmm. I, I tell you, if he wants equal time to the coverage that's given to uh, Kamala Harris, if the news does not cover him at all or speak his name, for about the next five years, then they'll, they'll, they'll be even. Okay, <laughs> they should. They should. I, I would. I would have no problem giving him equal coverage. That's right. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. You know, I noticed CNN went back to carrying his rally today. You know, front to back, and they're they're still going out of their way to fawn all over him and. You know, they're on their little apology tour. They're back to covering his rally so he can get up there and, you know, say whatever he wants with no one really, you know, saying He, he held a speech today and he brought up Hannibal Lecter again. I, you know, I, I, I don't watch them, but I noticed that it was on CNN when I turned my television on. That was the last channel. It was turned it back on. It was on and it was live, and I thought they were just doing a second or two, but no, it kept going. And I said that that's I got enough. Of yeah, that. but he was he was doing his Hannibal Lecter routine again. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't know what that's about. And he talks about Hannibal Lecter like he's a real person. A real person, yeah. Yeah. 
They so I don't know. Will they show every one of the vice president's rallies the way? <laughs> Uh, they, I they, heard they, that. Is. They but, should. But the late, the late great Hannibal Lecter. That's how he refers to him. You know. And he was still alive in all the novels and movies. <laughs> yeah, right. He never died in any of them. I I can't explain any of that. I yeah, I don't know where that nonsense comes you from. You have to ask somebody. Else I mean, about doesn't anybody? I mean, are, are, are Americans so stupid that yeah, they yeah. don't they don't understand yeah. this uh, about him? You know, There's a good portion that are, because they're going to vote for him. I mean, uh, they, in the convention, they were saying how they're the party of law and order, and they they nominated a 31 count felon for for president. 34 count felon. 34. I like I like what Kamala said <laughs> in her first speech. She said, "Mr. Trump, I can't wait till we have our our um, our debate because." I have had experience with people that are convicted felons and convicted rapists before in court. That isn't exactly how she put it. It was a funny. Well, she did it. It was funny. Very close it, it, to was, that, it was. She did it with a straight face. It, it, in her. No, it, yeah. was, it was funny the way she Much said better. it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She said, basically she said, uh, uh, "I've kn uh, I know his type. I've met them a yeah. lot of times." Or right. Something like that. Yep. Yeah. But uh, then she said it again in another speech, and I was going, "Okay, now lay off of that for a while." Really, it's a good Once line. It, it's a good line. Bring it back, maybe in a half a month or so. Huh? Bring it back in. in oh, the I'm sure it will be brought yeah. back in the debate. You know, um, I, you know, I mean, she sort of saved it for the debate and just said, "I've met people like you before. I've prosecuted them." You yep. know. <clears throat> Yeah. Sent them to jail. Yeah. So. You should be. But, uh, you know, I think that uh, I think that what I've seen in the last couple of days gives me a lot of hope that I think I think there's a good shot she can beat out Trump. I think yes. when the public here, it's all those people in the middle, you know, now how you can be in the middle. I have no idea either. But that's, you know, there are people in the middle and those people who are in the middle uh, just to keep, um, you know, uh, um, I keep looking and trying to see who they're going to vote for. And I think now that she showed up, they've suddenly gone, well, that's fine. I, I'll, I'll go with her. You oh, know? Yep. She's intelligent. She's smart. You know, all of that. But how you can be in the middle, I, I can't understand. How you can go, gee, shall I vote for Trump or shall I vote for Biden? How you can even start there is beyond me. And then all the, all the money that rolled in right after that that was made, right? Over $100 million campaign well, right away. Well, he was always bragging about the money he made after he was convicted or something. And it was like $50,000. Yeah. And here it's $100,000 in like three days or something like 100 million. that. 100 million. 100 million, yeah. excuse me. From over a million individual donors. Yeah, I think they said like 51,000 new ones or something. I don't know. Yeah. People the, the first time Huge they ever donated. Yeah. 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 And yeah, uh, Echo, what, Brian. What's his name? Mr. Tesla um, has said he. Elon Musk. What, Elon, Elon Musk. Musk. Everybody was saying he was going to give money to Trump. I think Trump exactly. thought he was going to get money from Elon Musk. Yeah. But he's today, Elon Musk president. said he's giving all his money to Kamala Harris. Yeah. Ooh. So that that's changed. He said, yeah. I would never give money to Trump. I don't give money to insane people or something to that effect. <laughs> or convicted felons. Yeah. No, he said same people. Yeah. Yeah. Not insane people. Yeah. So, I mean, so, you know, even, even you know, Brian can feel would, better about owning a Tesla, Tesla now. He know? wouldn't be the first businessman that donated to both campaigns. Yes. But, he, but he's not donating to both campaigns. No, he's already given money to Trump. That came out a month ago. No, uh, he didn't. He did not give money to Trump. Okay, well, I heard according, about it. According to him, he did not give money to Trump. Trump okay. was under the mistaken impression that he had given him money, but he said he hadn't because he wouldn't give money to somebody like that. Okay, good. He said, good but he, you know, he, he said he promised him $42,000 a month. Uh, Forty-two million dollars a month. Yeah. Why do I keep kind of a thousand? Forty-two million dollars a, a, a month, and he said, "I'm giving that to Kamala." You know. Mm. So, uh, uh, mm. you, you know, so get off of uh, Elon Musk's mm. tail. 
on that one. Yes. Jeff. Well, my daughter uh, signed up already where she's going to uh, support them. I don't know what it, the job is, and she doesn't know either. Support who? We're going to do some work. Well, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of work and to be she's done. she's a capable person. A lot of door-to-door -door yeah. stuff and, you know. Yeah, they got 61,000 new volunteers, they said. Yeah, she's one of the volunteers. <laughs> Well, I think uh, nobody felt good about Biden, okay? Right. We wanted to feel good about Biden. It would have been nice, but, you know, he isn't, uh, he, he's not all there. He wasn't there tonight, you know? Yeah. I, I didn't I know. feel he was, you know. Hey, I'm not there anymore. I don't know why I keep doing this. You know? uh, I don't know. You always, whenever you get sick, you always seem to cancel the weekly show, but the Monday show must go on. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a good some show. You watch it after the fact. So. Well, those people that sounds like some jealousy coming from Alan. <laughs> those are a bunch of people no. who like each no, other no, a really. lot. And I round them up together once a week and they all get to kind of chat with each other. You know, it's so, good stuff. Yeah. I like Andrew Deutsch. She's funny. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Very funny guy. But anyway, so you know, I mean, it it uh, it it's really uh, kind of amazing what's happening here, and it's uh, all all changed for the better. So what you know. needed to happen. Hmm? That's what needed to happen. It's, you know, as sad as it is, but you know, it, I hope yeah. though that I hope that the campaign that she runs, I hope is very positive, because mm -hmm. I think Trump is is running. You know, and will continue to very negative, not not just about her, the candidate, but it's very negative on America. You know, it it's it's very well, so negative. Far, so far, very down. Yeah, but so you know, far, and he's, and he's out today promising more of that. You know, yeah. saying he he's not going to be nice about her and all that. And I let him just do his deal. And I hope that she runs a very positive campaign. You know. And it was only once, it was only for a few seconds, but I, I don't think that it's a good idea for her rallies to chant, lock him up and things like, right. I mean, as, as, as <clears throat> observing as he is of all, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying that campaigning wise, she, I, hopefully it, that it, doesn't it, happen yeah, again. It, if it does, I just want her to say, whoa, 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 wait, hey, yeah, about she, the future, yeah. we're moving forward, you know, yeah. uh, hopefully. I mean, I, I just don't think that will play well. I, I, I want her to be basically what was the third option. You know, you had Biden, you had Trump, and, well, you know, we don't like any of them. We want somebody else, and then here she comes, and she doesn't make it about either one of them. You know, um, just, you know, it's it's like that movie. You know, I'm Kamala Harris, and I'm running for president. You know, I mean, just move forward. And tell us what you want to do, and That's right. tell us what you're going to ignore do. all that nonsense. You know, I hope. Yeah, well, I, I, I think she's going to not not be as nasty. Let me put it that way. Yeah. Um, I, I think that she's going to run a pretty positive campaign and talk about the future of America as opposed to, I mean, well, she it would be a mis big mistake of her to always go after Trump in her speeches, because then you somehow you make him a factor. If you don't mention him, it's like I don't care about him. You yeah, know, just I care talk about, about you. about your plans and all that. You know, I just I mean, like I said, the lock him up chant. I, 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 man, I just don't. I think that'll don't let that spread. You know, what I mean, that, I think that'll just that'll just play right. You know, and the way CNN is acting now. You know, on their apology tour with him and everything, I I think they'll take it. They'll say, "Oh, look, they're chanting lock you." I mean, I just you know, I mean that it. I, now you say you say that uh, the CNN, CNN you know? has got an apology tour going where he's oh, they're, concerned. Oh, they're making sure that they go out of their way to act like they are just being so good about Trump. I mean, they you know. They will let people come on anymore and say things that are just ridiculously false, and and they'll just well, you know, we're just trying to be fair here. I mean, it's just, I mean, 
Yeah. Hmm. Since the the you know the shooting, I mean they've they've really struck a different tone. Like I said, they made sure they covered the rally today. I mean they're just bending over backwards to make it look like, or maybe they like it. I don't you know I don't know, but that they're you know they're they're just uh, they're being fair to him and all that you know like like they felt bad because all these times that he would go on television and lie, they would say oh well he's lying to you. Now well, it's more but like, that's their job. Well, you know, wait a minute, I, but I, wait a minute, that's their job. I, I is agree. to correct. But they're not doing is, it is anymore. To correct, to correct false statements. You know, I don't disagree, but I'm just saying their their tone has changed mm -hmm. since you know last Saturday or, or or whatever. You know, Kevin said he noticed it right away too. I said, yeah, you know, in the morning. You know, it started the morning after, and it's it's gotten worse. You know, Casey Hunt goes on there every morning now and acts like, oh, oh, don't don't say anything bad about Trump. You know, we we don't want to we don't want to stir division in the country. We just want to cover what the story. Mean? If he don't, if it, it, you're not yeah. going to stir division, he's doing a good enough job of that on his own. Yeah. You know. Sure. I mean, I don't understand it. I mean, I don't, you know, there's a certain level at which you go, you know, okay, that's it. You know, I'm through. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I don't know. So that's why I say hopefully she makes her campaign very positive. You know, I would just prefer that it was not right. getting into all the nonsense of the, of the last, you know, really eight years. I mean, I, I just, I think that's their opportunity to just say, you know what, we're just going to, we're going to start today. You know, I mean, because everything that happened has happened and, you know, no one can do anything about it anymore. And all we ever do is argue about it. Let's just, let's just move forward. Well, you see, I think it's important that if, if you're a candidate, don't mention the competition, you know, just talk about what you're going to do. You know, if you're sitting there and, and she spends the whole time putting down Trump, I think that it, it, it's time to just move on from that and say, I'm going to talk about what I'm going to do for this country and how the other party is not going to do what I'm going to do. You know? Yeah. And, I mean, and, and they've got to do that. They've got to get into that, that mood. Uh, and uh, they've got to bring the level of discourse up, you know. So. Yeah. yeah, that that's what I would prefer. Yeah. And so, anyway, uh, that's 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 one thing that went on t uh, this weekend, and uh, certainly uh, I I don't know I was I was kind of excited. I don't know about you, I felt I felt a little cleaner about things, sure. and and, and that life was a little bit better in this country, and there's a sense of hope and a sense that there might be a future for <coughs> us. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I can't see now how Trump is going to win this thing. Uh, he's going to go so crazy about her that he's just going to blow it. He's just going to. Especially picking J.D. Vance for vice president. Ooh, J.D. Vance is a bad about a train idea. wreck. <laughs> well, I think already he's having buyer's remorse. Yeah. You know, because he yep. sent that guy out on the, on the campaign trail, and I don't know if you've heard any of J.D. Vance's speeches, but I can't figure out what the hell they are. There is no nope. speech. No. It's just... He's trying to be Trump Jr. is what he's trying yeah. to be. And, uh, you know, I mean, he, he went in something the other day, and I went, why is he even doing that, you know? You know, it's very strange that this guy and his wife both went to Yale University. What do you mean? Actually, they graduated. What do you mean it's strange they both went there? Well, they, you know... That's where they met. They are so dumb-looking. Whatever they say, it's ridiculous. He's a lawyer, isn't he? <laughs> they're, yeah. both, they're both lawyers, aren't they? Yeah, they both got law degrees from Yale. Yeah, that too. You're, you're assuming that getting an education from Yale makes you smart, you know. And it doesn't really. Isn't that the college you went to, Jeff? Excuse me? I said, isn't that the college you went to, Yale? No, I, I went there as a patient. I was a patient. Yeah. They did a good job. You're still here, thank God. That's right. I kept them uh, busy. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Many years. You know, he's running around, and the Republican Party is 
sued in federal court to stop Liam, the implementation of the new, you know, save federal student loan repayment program, which was an oh. extra program that people were getting back into the swing of paying their loans in an affordable way. You know, I mean, I know firsthand experience and then, you know, it, it gets put on hold by the federal courts and they get an injunction, no more enrollees. They have to stop the payments, put it back where it was. And you've got Vance and others running around saying how great it is and talking about how it's a big win for the country because now people won't be stuck paying for, you know, the debt of people who went to the Ivy League and all that. And I just read that and I think what you mean like you, like J.D. Vance, J.D. Vance yeah. to yell for free, you know. He's on C-SPAN in 2016 telling Brian Lamb how, you know, he went to Yale with uh, government grants and, and mm. uh, scholarships because he was poor. Well, yeah. nobody's ever come up with the, with the idea that it's uh, – let me let somebody in here. She called earlier, and, and she wanted to come on, so let me bring her on. Uh, Roberta, are you there? Turn on your uh, – yeah, 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 there you are. Okay. Okay. Have you been hearing what we've been talking about? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, do you have any comment uh, so far about what we're talking about? <laughs> I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I've been paying attention. For sure. For sure. Um, my background, uh, just so you know, yeah, yeah no, my ba my background is I... Uh, I, I was the trainer for the phone. Yeah. Oh. Wait a minute, you're breaking up. What? Are you having problems hearing us? I'm on the delay somehow for my. I'm, I'm getting feedback. You know what you're doing? You're listening to your uh, your uh, you're listening to your browser. You're not listening to uh, 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 what do you call it? Zoom. Uh, Zoom. Zoom. Yeah. No, I hear you. Huh? Okay. okay. I'll, I'll just talk. I just turned down my uh, the audio. Okay. But uh, no, my background is that I actually was the trainer, the uh, phone banking trainer for um, Mary Peltola, who turned Alaska blue. Mm -hmm. And I also um, was the trainer for Dean Phillips when he was up against Biden in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. So this is all very interesting to me. And uh, go ahead and keep going. Okay. Well, where do you where do you live currently? Uh, I'm in Illinois, mm -hmm. and you may not remember me, Alex, but uh, I was uh, at KSFX in San Francisco when you were there. Do you oh, remember? were you? We really? used to go to the movies together. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. I have a KSFX, not KSFX. Uh, I'm now in uh, Chicago, yeah. Illinois. Yeah. It, it, but uh, anyway, I mean, it. it you know, it's just that. Uh, it's been an amazing couple of days, and it's interesting to see how I think uh, Trump is going to implode because he didn't plan on this. They want to sue the Democratic Party for the money they spent trying to go up against Biden so far. Uh -huh. you know, and they keep referring to it as a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a... Uh, 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 what, what's the term? A fraud or the, yeah, whatever. No, uh, uh, what do you call it? Something and something. Uh, it, it, but bait they, and switch. Bait and yeah. switch. And, and I, you know, how's it bait and switch? I, I, I only have heard about that where sales at Macy's are concerned, you know? Right. <laughs> but they, they haven't even had the Democratic Party yet, the, the whole thing primary. yet, right? So, Convention. yeah, they haven't had the primary, so they haven't, really, oh, yeah. they haven't even picked anybody. Convention, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so. And uh, you work for a lot of political people, right, Roberta? Yeah, she's having trouble here. I think here's yeah, the, here's the, here's the, here's the problem you've got. You're trying, us, you're trying to hear us. You're trying to hear us. You're trying to hear us through your uh, um, uh, through your, your browser and through our webs from, from the website. What you want to do is you just want to turn that down and listen to it through uh, Zoom. Okay. Ask for Pam. Pam will help you out. <laughs> Pam will help you. <laughs> you know. Pam, get on the call, please. <laughs> it's just, I think it's, uh, now, the other fun. thing that happened today that we should probably mention is, uh, did anybody see uh, Netanyahu's speech to the Congress? Oh, no. God. 
The Congress was told that everybody had to be respectful. If they weren't, they would be thrown out. So, so 300 people didn't show up. That's right. <laughs> She, Kamala wasn't there. Trump wasn't right. there. Well, Kamala, and his vice president weren't there. Wasn't there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I mean, uh, well, Trump's meeting with him in Mar-a-Lago tomorrow or the next day. And by but Kamala, Kamala is supposed to meet with them also after that privately. Are, they, they said. are, are, are Trump and him going to share the same jail cell? Why would Trump <laughs> meet? Why would Trump meet with them other than they're both alike? Uh, I think because Trump is mm -hmm. because uh, uh, Netanyahu is trying to kiss everybody's ass he can possibly kiss. You know, okay, it's terrible. You know. I think I got it. I did have two uh, tabs open with the audio because I was hearing twice, even without my mic open. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I'm good. I'm sorry. That we that we that hear you happens, clear. That happens. Thank to, you. That, yeah, yeah that, we that, hear you. That happens clearly. to a lot of people. No, but yeah. Netanyahu today. I mean, this speech just irritated the hell out of me. You know. Um, every time he kept t saying that Israel and the Jews, I'm sorry, don't include me. You know, you <laughs> want to say Israelis, it's fine. I'll go along with that. But don't say Jews. You know, yeah, Israelis happen to be Jews, but all Jews don't happen to be Israelis. Yep. And, or, and, Zion, or Zionists. Uh, or, or Zionists, you know. Well, some of us are Zionists on the show. Who? And one person, uh, Jeff and I. Jeff, okay. You're both yeah, Zionists? You. Are you Zionists? Are you well, right? somewhat, I guess. Well, wait a minute. Just are you or are I, I, you? I believe in the I believe in the Jewish state. I believe in the right. Okay. Yeah. That that that's oh. that's fine. That doesn't make you a Zionist necessarily. Okay. You know, uh, I I don't believe in the Jewish state. I don't believe in the Jewish state. I believe in, believe in the Israeli state. Okay. I don't believe in calling it the Jewish state because then you're including me. And don't blame me for your faults. Okay? <laughs> and let's face it, Netanyahu's a murderer. Yeah. Yep. He's terrible. Yes. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, uh, don't, don't, don't include me in that. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to be part of your little. I, I think he's cut from the same cloth that Trump is. Well, he. I, I don't know, like if, him. He, if he doesn't remain, um, if he doesn't prime minister, a prime minister, uh, he immediately is going to be put on trial. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what he's been avoiding all along. And that's what Trump's trying to do too, to avoid being put on trial. Yep. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what I was that say too. Right. Absolutely. You know. Yep. So it's, it, you know, it, it, it's amazing uh, that, you know, that, that, that all of these things are, are happening like this. These people are, we just have such terrible people. Excuse me, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to set, set my, uh, my noise gate here so that it doesn't uh, over, over pump. Be careful. Around. Anyway, do I sound okay, everybody? Yeah. yeah. I don't sound like my my sound is pumping in and out and things like that. Okay. You sound like Alex Bennett. Is yeah. that okay? Well, that, that I would I I try not to, but you know, it's uh, But anyway, so I mean, it's just, you know, it's been uh it, it, it's just that I I just and then he brought up these oh, he, he brought these troops with him, a guy who lost his leg and a guy who did this and a guy who did that. And I I consider that exploitation. You know, I mean, come on, okay. And the, and the guy who lost his, his his leg didn't seem too happy about it. You know, I mean, and he just got a, a trip to the United States, I guess, in a good hotel room. But I mean, it was just, I just hate all these people who are taking advantage of human beings. Using and, them as props, yeah. Well, you know, when a, a Trump got hit in the ear by shrapnel from a from a uh, from a, a uh, what do you call it? A, uh, uh, a teleprompter. teleprompter. Yeah, from a teleprompter. Yeah, actually, they finally said it was the bullet itself that got him. Just oh, so you know. Oh, the bullet! It was the bullet that got yeah. him. It was the bullet. They even yeah. have a picture mm -hmm. of it. Uh, somebody caught it on uh, 
on camera. Oh, they, they, they showed that thing flying by, but they still yeah, but believe the, that. Yeah, the may... FBI looked at that picture and they said it was definitely the bullet. That the went bullet, yeah. Here. It was definitely yeah. the bullet? Okay. It was definitely but the bullet. In any yeah. event, he only got nicked in the ear, okay? Cool. You know, and then he wore that tampon to the... Uh, to the convention, okay, uh, and and then he did. Oh, oh, God saved my life. God wanted me to go on with it, and I'm I'm watching all this and going, God, too bad he missed. You know, I mean, it, it, for this to happen, and then what happened is, the bullet did hit somebody and killed them. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And nobody he, cared about that. He, he, you know, you know, Trump hmm? is the lucky one. He turned his head to the right. To talk to a group of people, had he had his head straight, the bullet would have went went right into his head, and probably killed him. Well, yeah, and and then you have Biden getting COVID. Just think if both of those guys got knocked out in a few days. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, but the the the, the problem was that, it, the, and then at the convention, see, I mean, I I just don't think it's right to take advantage of people, and people who die. Certainly, you don't want to take advantage of them. And um, in his case, he took, if you remember at the convention, he had the uh, the, je the uh, gear that the guy who died fire wore as a fireman. Oh, yeah. 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 And he had it on stage with him and was kissing the helmet. I didn't, oh my God. I mean, have a little respect for that I, family. I, I guess nobody told Trump that the guy had some kind of deadly disease. And you don't want to kiss the helmet. Is that a joke? I don't understand. It's a that. joke. Uh, would you, would, could you explain it to why us? Why would you? Why would you kiss a helmet? Well, Trump right. kiss a kiss flag. Kiss. Well, you remember he kissed the flag, he, right? He, yeah. Oh. And so here he was kissing the guy's helmet. I mean, give the me dramatic a dramatic piece of shit. He, that's why. Well, I yeah. mean, what you're doing is you're using a dead person as yeah. fodder for your campaign. And that's terrible. This guy, had Trump not been there, this guy would have been alive today. But, you know, I don't like that. They do that at the State of the Unions also. The State of the Unions, they always have people in the balcony there that they stop and they talk these sad stories about. And same thing. They keep. I, I don't like all that stuff. Yeah, no, well, and none of us do, you know. But it's just amazing uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, we, that people eat this up, you know. Uh, I, I, nobody called him on that, and that was in bad taste. And the family, because they were Trump supporters, I suppose, were very happy to have him have that jacket and so on. You know, but uh, I mean, somebody should have. Somebody, there's nobody there to rein him in. That's the problem. Sure. You know, they're all scared of him. Hmm? Well, with the, with any luck, Kamala will win, and then we'll be able to rein him in in court. Well, no, the fact is that I would be very happy if Kamala wins and we never hear from Trump again. Okay? Exactly. And that would be enough for me. I don't care if he goes to jail or doesn't but go to jail. That's not going to happen. Well, what they ought to do is... If Kamala wins, we're not going to hear the end of it from Trump. That's right. Never she didn't away. win, and it's when, never going to end for months. When Joe is going now, out, he should ahead. just pardon him and let him fade away to nowhere land. That's not a bad idea. Say goodbye. I like that. That's going to ring. Well, you know, I mean, what is he going to do? Bitch about it? No, he'll do just go to Mar-a-Lago and fade away. 140 Capitol policemen hospitalized because of him. And it would make Joe look really good. Well, the way to drive him crazy, uh, absolutely nuts, is to not talk about him at all. Yeah. You know, on the news, only talk about him when he does something important. And that's so infrequently that you're never really going to have to talk much about him. You know, that will drive him crazy. And then he will start doing all kinds of things to get attention like a petulant kid. You know, yeah. uh, well, that's what he does right now. Yeah. That's yeah. what he does right now. Exactly. And, and the cameras follow him around waiting for him to do something. He's still bitching about the 2020 election, how it was stolen from him. Yeah. So is Hillary. <laughs> move on. Move on. Which, which, which election did he say? To the 2020. He talked 2020 is oh. what he was saying. Yeah. I, I was just referring back to Hillary in the 2016. She's still oh. thinking about that one, too. <laughs> well, I mean, she had a right to bitch. She yeah. won the election by the popular vote. Yeah. Somewhere there was something rigged or Jimmy rigged or whatever, mm -hmm. and she just was very good and just said, okay, you won. 
Yeah. You know, and I'm not going to fight she it. Can, she didn't send people to the Capitol to beat up cops. That's for sure. No. Or to threaten the vice president's life. Yeah. Signing a document, doing his constitutional duty. That's right. You know, so anyway, it, 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 it's, it's pretty sad all the way around. Uh, that, well, that we even have to talk about this. That we can't just be talking about, hey, this guy's running against this guy. What do you think of him? Well, he's better at doing this than that person is, and she's better at doing that. And I kind of like her because she's got a nice way about her, but I don't like him because stuff like that. Not, you know, like to begin with, after every speech, we enumerate how many lies. Yeah. Yeah. He made in the yeah, well, I, I can tell you from talking to the voters, and I've talked to hundreds of thousands of them now um, between the two campaigns, and I can tell you that the voters just want to know what's going to help them in their lives. They don't yeah. care about this, you know, back and forth. I mean, they get into it because the media pumps them up into it. But when you just talk to them generally as people, their lives, they have their personal lives. They, they're struggling. Lots of people are struggling. And they, they just want answers. And that's, if you stick to policy, that's what's going to win Kamala, the, Kamala, the, the actual election. If she, if she goes and does that, that's the problem. Yeah. Well, well, if she talks positively about the future of America, as opposed to Trump, who is constantly saying, oh, this is the worst country in the world. I mean, if you listen to him, that's what he's saying. He's, yeah. he's literally putting our country down and saying, well, oh, you know. Fox News has been pitching how Biden's the worst president ever in the history of the U.S. And the the people are buying into that. The people who are the Fox News viewers are buying into well, you that. May but remember, that spreads you, to other people. Yeah, but you may remember the historians a few months ago who came out with a list of the worst and the best and worst presidents of all time. And who came out as the worst president of all time? Donald Trump, you know, so, I mean. It, and, you know, he, he keeps talking, saying, well, if I'm president, blah, 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 I'm going to change this and change this. And so, yeah, but he didn't do that shit when he was president. So why is he going to yeah. do it now? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he had yeah. his chance. And, yeah. yeah. Well, the thing to remember, and this is something that a lot of people don't talk about. If you think back, we're, we're talking when Trump got the presidency. Yeah. There are people who have you know, either short memories or maybe haven't even been, you know, an, an adult for that much in their lives. And mm. during Trump's presidency, Obama had, of course, you know, gotten our our whole, you know, whether you like Obama or not, the, the economy was back up. You know, we had a mm. trajectory that was on a positive streak. Trump didn't touch it. He just let it alone. So it was basically Obama's economic policy that he was just riding. And the people when Trump was elected, those people had it pretty good. I mean, up until COVID, we were on a really good trajectory. Things were looking good. Everybody there. In fact, the blacks had some of the better economy that they ever had. It was really good for a lot of people. And that's what they remember. Unfortunately, we are now talking all of Trump and all of Biden. That's eight years. And it, it, a lot of people who are, you know, like, especially in their 20s, you wonder why they're not, you know, all upset about Trump. It's just that they had good times during Trump years. Mm -hmm. It wasn't perfect. I mean, they still had all the, the college you know, they, they 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 had a lot of things they couldn't do. They still couldn't buy houses. They still had college debt. They still had a lot of things that were, you know, they couldn't start families easily. But at least they had a good income and they had a good job. And then comes um, Biden and we had the inflation and we had a lot of other things going on. And Biden, COVID. And, well, yeah, yeah we, COVID, we, you know, uh, which, let's face it, COVID yeah. caused a lot of problems in, uh, yeah. in this yeah. country. You also got to remember that uh, Trump inherited the, ref the, the, the the fixed economy from Obama. That's the point. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, and he claimed COVID, it. He claimed had COVID it. not come along, we would have seen another four years of Trump. We would have seen another four years of Trump. No doubt. Yeah, I think he's so. right. I think he's right because everybody was thinking that thing, mm. things were good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. Or eight. 
<laughs> yeah, or 12 or however many years he wants or, to put his yeah. dynasty in. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's kind of like, uh, I, I don't know. I, it, 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 it's just I don't understand uh, how um, uh, people can even think of Trump as a good idea. You know, I mean, they, there are a lot of other assholes in this world you could vote for, and they pick this asshole. I mean, what? where's the magic is what I don't understand. Well, the cable news, especially Fox News, but they have Fox News, they have Truth, Social, whatever these other places are that they, um, uh, One America, whatever. And they have been just drumming into people's heads that anything is better than Biden. Like I said, they've been pitching him as the worst president in the United States. They've been pitching that. In fact, that's probably in Kamala's uh, favor that, you know, they, they focused, like they said, so much on going anti-Biden that now they're caught and they're like, okay, now what? But talking to the voters, they're like, anybody but Biden, you know, anybody. We, we've had a horrible, horrible four well, years. you know, and what I'm so happy about is, is that I feel the, a little sense of feeling clean, like I just took a shower. Now, <laughs> I happen to be 84 years old. Uh, and I'm, I should be the first one to defend Biden or Trump or whatever for their age. But I'm not going to because I know what the, the faults I have and the problems that I have. And uh, they, are, they are numerous. And, uh, you know, my memory isn't what it used to be. A lot of things like that, okay? I'm not as, uh, as, as chipper as I used to be. I understand that. And because I understand that, I don't want to see an 82-year-old president. I don't even want to see an 80-year-old 80, 80 president. Uh, I want to see somebody, Kamala Harris's age, who has <coughs> some experience and some ability under her belt, who is younger. And, and you know, I, she just gets out a coherent sentence, for crying out loud. Neither of the other candidates got out a coherent sentence. And to just have somebody younger running is so refreshing, you know? So. Yeah, it's painful to watch Biden speak. <laughs> it is. You know, and I, I, it, it, it's sad because this is a man who, I, well, I was never a big Biden fan because the whole thing that happened with the uh, with the you know the Supreme Court hearings years ago yeah. turned me off to him, okay. But nevertheless, I understand why he was great, and I understand now why he's great because in the last moment where he wanted the presidency again, because I guess you like the big plane available to you, and the um, you know the, the White House chef cooking you anything you want. Uh, it was time for him to go, and wow. he finally decided to go, and I think that was a very brave decision on his part. So, you know, I can't, I can't fault him for that. In the end, he turned out okay. You know, so uh, I, I just, uh, and I wish him well. You know, I, I don't, uh, I, I think he's pretty much gone right now. Um, a lot of the Republicans want him to step down as president. Well, then you'll get Kamala, yes. and and people will get to vote for the president again. You know, I mean, so I they mean, only want that because they want Mike Johnson to be the second in line to the uh, presidency. If anything happened to Biden, or that's Harry. right. Yeah, they want another Gerald Ford. Yep. They would never approve a vice president before the election. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Josh, you've been a little quiet. Well, I mean, I'm just letting everybody, you know, have what they say. It's good, makes sense. Uh, I don't understand uh, the call for Biden to leave office currently. It's, you know, nonsense. But I, sometimes they ask for things that get people going, but they don't realize if it happens how bad off they would be. Like, hey, Biden should leave the race. Biden should leave the race. Biden should leave the race. <laughs> And then he gets exactly what he wanted. Oh, well, he can't do that. That's uh, anti-democratic. Uh, we think it might be illegal. Um, you know, obviously he can't serve. I mean, I don't think that anyone's explained to them that, hey, listen, you know, with six, with as long as there is to go, if he left today and 
Kamala Harris becomes the president of the United States and six weeks from now there's some sort of crisis, okay? Like something really bad happens, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, a small uh, terror attack or, or I don't know, I don't know, whatever. And she handles it great. You know, the fucking election is over. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, why would you, you know, I mean, that's like a football coach saying, yeah, maybe we should just give the ball to the other team. You know? <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, you know, because, you know, we don't, we don't think they can score. We're so good that we're going to give them the ball and we're going to show everybody that they can't score. Not understanding that that sounds fine right up until they score, you know, yeah. and you got a real problem, you know. So I don't know what makes them – think those kinds of stupid things, you know, mm -hmm. because it's not, it's not a smart political uh, move, you know, so, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's, it sort of comes from people who are irrational in a lot of ways, so it doesn't really matter, but, I mean, look, like I said, I just hope that the campaign moves forward and it gets very positive and that but you know it's not you know, it's, it's back all, at this stuff. It, only on her side it won't get that way on his side it won't be positive on Trump. it won't be it won't well, be. That, that's, that's what i mean oh that's i absolutely fine. don't yeah there's no chance that he will act like a regular human being i mean right. that, that ship sailed a long time ago let him drive himself <laughs> into the ground yeah but you know i yeah. hope that she just act i mean really what she has she just has to act professional just mm -hmm. act like a professional Competent leader, no matter what you're leading in, you know, act like a professional. That's all she really needs to do. And I think that if she does it over time, you know, that there is many weeks here that slowly but surely, yeah, um, you know, it, it'll it'll be okay. I mean, you know, pretty solid evidence that says, you know, right. around eight to nine percent of the electorate is you know undecided. There's also pretty solid evidence that says. A majority of that 8% is, you know, minorities. I mean, there's a lot of things that work in her favor if she just performs as a competent, positive, forward-looking individual and avoids all the games and naysaying of the last, you know, year or two. No matter whose fault it was or who said what, none of that matters anymore. Right. The, uh, also, you campaign. mentioned... One of the things that you guys should be aware of is that uh, among blacks, she is not very popular. She has uh, really gotten... Them. What are you talking about? I'm black. I know. My whole family's black. I just went to my family reunion. Everybody loves Kamala. That's good for you. A lot of the blacks that I have talked to and worked with do not like Kamala. And so that's a problem. Why? That, Why? Know. Why? What Why? Is, because... What? All right. Two things. Number one, because of her, in, her high degree of incarceration that they feel was inappropriate uh, that she did in California, and also because they feel that she is an elitist, that she talks down to people and they don't like her. That Again, this is not all blacks. I'm not, you know, <laughs> any more than any other group. Not trying well, I've to heard, say. Well, I've heard that. You yeah. Know. Yeah. And, yeah. So she has to talk to those people. She has to get them to warm up to her. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to have to be part of what she has to do. That's all I was going to say. The other choice is Trump, who's even worse. <laughs> well, a lot, of people, a lot of people are talking about voting third party, or at least they were. When it was Biden, Trump, and I was talking to the voters, oh my God, the third party candidates were coming up. Those names were coming up constantly. Now, the, you know, playing field's changed, you know, Kamala's in there, and so that might, you know, change it a lot. So I, I just wanted to mention that, because that was reality. Yeah, yeah, well, but on the other hand, uh, I, I just don't know that a black person has anybody else to vote for. I mean, RFK Jr., come on, you know. Yeah, but then again, the progressives, <laughs> they say the same thing about progressives. They don't have anybody else to vote for, so they got to vote Democrat. Well, you know. <laughs> well, the you, problem they, in this country has always been that we have two parties and that's it, you know. Uh, I mean, in Italy, they got 15 parties, for crying out loud, you know. And then they winnow, winnow them down to like two or three <laughs> for the election and, uh, you know. But, I mean, at it's least you... Well, that's all the mafia anyways. doesn't matter. <laughs> that's, well, that's being... Oh, the money anyway. I mean, you can make an argument that, you know, with where her unfavorables are at and favorables and everything, 
that that's really all without, you know, running. Mm -hmm. And so they're very likely at what is probably, you know, like a low point for her. Mm -hmm. And as she talks to the public and acts professional and performs well, and, you know, she's positive in those things, those things can bump up by a couple, three points, you know, easily. And that's the real difference here, you know, because, I mean, you know, we had already talked about, you know, with Biden, for example, about, hey, you know, look, there is a pretty solid 10 to 12 percent of the Republican Party that has already said they would not <laughs> vote for Trump. They would never vote for Trump. They're not going to. They're either not going to vote or maybe vote for a third candidate because they didn't like Biden either. It, it, let's just say if just 40 percent of those people vote for, uh, you know, Kamala Harris. And this is kind of the kind of stuff that polls can't really pick up either. You know what I'm saying? If just, like I said, if just four of every 10 of those cast a vote for her, hmm. that's a tremendous, you know, that could be overall nationwide a percentage point or a percentage point and a half in the general election, which, you know, will win the election, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it's not as if it's going to be 60-40. I mean, so that's what I'm saying is she doesn't have to, it's not as if she has to change millions of minds. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean... <laughs> If fifty thousand, if fifty thousand people in the right jurisdictions yeah. go from I don't like Biden or Trump to yeah, you know what, Kamala Harris is fine, yeah. and it's done, you know, or it could be. I mean, you know, I'm just so I mean, maybe. I'm just saying. Also, think about how she did in the primaries. She was out so early, so I mean, they had choice. People had choice, and she didn't do well there, and so she does have some well, ground. She also to didn't. Make up. She also didn't have the money. You know, that's she didn't have that's the money that Biden did or a couple other people mm -hmm. did. So, I mean, that's one of the reasons she mm -hmm. was out. Uh, but now she's got Biden all was them. out in 2016. And yet, look, he won in 2020. Yeah. It was a long time ago. Well, I mean, he's Alan, I mean, Alan. You know? Yeah, I, I, I think you're talking about the black folks in this state. I live in California. They were under her thumb. And uh, I think that a lot of people in California, especially black people uh, that, that did bad things, which is a real small minority, but they got, you know, they spread their rumors around and stuff, but um, I don't think they got a fair shake while she was a, a DA in San Francisco and stuff. And yeah, I, on the other hand, she gets, she's going to, she she's going to have to work on California on the black community in California. Um, she got reelected twice. I mean, she got reelected as, as, as a, um, the district attorney in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. She got reelected as attorney general in that, California. Being, a, being the DA in San Francisco, we've gone through five DAs in ten years. So but I don't she live wasn't in San one of them, though. She wasn't huh? one of them. Oh, and no, and, and no, but no, but I'm just saying. And, I'm just and saying. Roberta that, here lived in San Francisco, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> were you there when she was there? No, I was there when you were there. Oh, okay. Well, then that, well, I wasn't there when she was there. That was when Willie Brown was still in office. Your That's, yeah. 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 Your but, buddy. But anyway, uh, hey, uh, you know, I, I got to play the theme, and you guys can hear the theme now. Mm -hmm. Let me see here. Let me see if I can get it going here. Can you hear that? Yep. You yeah. see? See? Her can. Yeah. Modern technology. No. It took them 10 years to get this far. I got it fixed. I got it fixed. Uh, boy. Well, it's been a good evening. And, and Roberta, you know, please come back. We need yeah, more women back. on this show. Well, I'm, I'm here mostly to ask for help for Status Coup News, who is an independent, a young independent channel who is trying to break through and start a network that we can not have to deal with MSNBC or CNN or Fox News. And I was hoping that maybe you guys might uh, know Where someone. Where are they located? Uh, they're out of New York City area. Okay, well, listen. And they're on YouTube. It's called Status Coup. And they could really use some help. They they have covered the Flint water crisis. They've covered East Palestine. They've covered yeah. the a, a lot of the UAW strike. They've been 
real okay. journalism. Listen, we're running out of time. Only, but call us back. Go. Call us back, and next time we'll talk more about it, and you can plug it like crazy. Okay. Tomorrow night. Uh, but we enjoy yeah. having you here, so please come back. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you to Charlie for being with us tonight. Josh, always a pleasure having you here. Alan, mm-hmm. always a pleasure having you there. Uh, Jeff, you know, it wouldn't be the same without you. Uh, uh, and, and Brian, uh, one of my favorites of all time. I'm trying to think of different things I can say about everybody that's nice. Kevin, thank you so much. And Roberta, please, let's do it again, all right? Okay? Yeah. Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. There's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, there'll be another citizen panel next right here with... Uh, our dear friend uh, uh, Amy Manuel, who does the intersection, she'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, you know what you do. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. See you later. <laughs>